who guarded the gateway, and there's probably a, a mummy placed inside of that. Uh, what's considered a, what's considered to be a, you know, the doorway, the gateway. Right. I believe there's probably a mummy there, marking this as a sacred area that that required special access, and so the, that area was guarded, and that's why you see a little, basically, what amounts to a guardhouse. Ancient expedition. I think we're looking, again, at a lost technology, and it was this ancient apocalypse 12,800 years ago that wiped that from the human memory banks why were these ancient elongated skulled peoples or humanoids of Malta living underground? Now I believe we're talking prior to 9700 BC for the original construction of the Sphinx. And they were what some people have called giants, probably no more than seven to eight feet tall. And those giants have been pulled out of American maps. Whether it's the colossal statue heads that have been unearthed, to all the strange artifacts you've been showing in the museums, to some of the strange features they seem to possess, the more I learn about the Omet culture, uh, really the more fascinated I become. Well, it's great to have author, explorer, a filmmaker, Timothy Albarino back uh, for another episode. And if you don't have Timothy's book, Birthright, get it. Uh, you can get it on Amazon or his website, timothyalberino.com. I want to ask you, because you just got back from uh, an epic trip to Peru with the Blurry Creature guys. Was there any new revelations or any just new insights from the trip? Anything that blew your mind um, that we just got to know about? I did have a lot of fun with uh, Luke and Nate from Blurry Creatures and with all of the other wonderful people who came on this trip. We had just such a phenomenal group of people. A lot of fun. Uh, we spent a lot of time hanging out and, and I got to know these individuals and just such a just a great group of people. Uh, this time, I've been to Peru many, many times, as, as most people are aware. I lived there for a decade. I've, I've been to Machu Picchu probably seven or eight times by now, filming most of the time. Um, and all of these other locations as well, Ojantay Tambo, Saksai uh, and all over the Amazon. But I had I had not yet been to Nyalpa Iglesia, which I know is a site that you've featured uh, in videos and and talked about at the BlurryCon. Um, and uh, I I I found that site to be very intriguing, as you know. It's it's very low key. It's not sort of an official archaeological site uh, in in the Cusco region. It's en route to Ojantay Tambo. It's just literally up the side of a mountain and uh and so that was the new experience for me and i i did glean some information while i was at nyampi glacier obviously as you well know it's regarded as a portal not just by new age types but also by the indigenous people they regard it as a portal and uh, what portal means Portal means something different to everybody you talk to. Some people look at it as a, as a metaphoric portal or a spiritual port, portal that sort of allows you to connect with something on the other side. And then there's people who think of it as a literal portal. Like you can somehow activate it and go through it and end up elsewhere, let's say, on the earth or not on the earth. So uh, it, it's it's very mysterious location, again, as you well know. Um, but while I was there, I was able to make some observations regarding Yalpa Iglesia with my colleague Andres Adazme, and uh, and with our with with a gentleman that was accompanying us named Nilo, who is uh, one of the experts in the region. He was a certified guide at uh, Machu Picchu for many years, and and he has archaeological training, and and so uh, while at Yalpa Iglesia. We were seeing some very clear connections to Tiwanaku in Bolivia, namely to the gate, to the gate of the sun in Tiwanaku, and to some of the uh, the iconographic symbolism uh, on those ruins in Bolivia, and uh, we we were able to recognize that there is a particular 
there's a particular motif that you find on the Gate of the Sun at Tiwanaku. The, and, and of course, within, Tiw- within the complex of Tiwanaku is Pumapunku. It's part of the complex. And Pumapunku means Gate of the Puma. And so um, there's very interesting motifs. Let's call them gate motifs all over Tiwanaku. And you literally have these gates. People can look it up online, look up the gate of the sun uh, at Tiwanaku or Tiwanaku. By the way, Tiwanaku is the town. Tiwanaku is the Aymara or Quechua, probably Aymara word describing the actual ruins, the ancient location, Tiwanaku. Uh, and you'll see the gate of the sun if you look it up online, and you'll see some of the gate motifs. And so it was very interesting to find those same gate motifs at Nyalpa Iglesia. And when I say gate, I literally mean a gate, a gateway, a doorway, because that's what the gate of the sun is. It's a door that goes nowhere. Now, of course, the gate of the sun probably went somewhere at some time, but because the site had been heavily abused, partly by the by the Bolivian army, by the way, who would use it as target practice for their cannons. Um, and then, of course, the villagers came and disassembled it for, to repurpose the stone for their, for their fences and their homes and these kinds of things. Um, the doorways, the gates at Tiwanaku are just lying on the ground, but obviously at one time they were erected and probably associated with edifices, one might imagine. So, but nevertheless have always been considered since time immemorial immemorial as gates to where is anyone's guess symbolic metaphoric who knows but over at Nyalpa Iglesia you have the same motifs uh, you have the the Andean cross you have the 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 Andean cross when you cut it in half it sort of forms a platform and those platforms represent the the three levels of Andean cosmology. You have the, the Hanampacha, which is the, which is, let's call it he- the heavens, right? Then you have the, oh my God, I just drew a blank on the, on the, uh, <laughs> on the earth, uh, the Kaipacha, which is, which is our realm, the earth, let's say. And then you have the, the, the Ukupacha, which is the underworld. And with the Ukupacha, there's symbolism associated with each one of these terraced levels of reality, Andean cosmology. The Hanan Pacha is represented by the Condor. The Kai Pacha is represented by the Puma. And the Ukupacha is represented by the Serpent. And so all over the Andes, you see these three symbols everywhere. You see the condor, the puma, and the serpent. Sometimes you see them together. Now, archaeologists will tell you that this is all just very symbolic, and it's representative of this three-tiered Andean cosmology, and it's all very spiritual and amorphous. But I have a feeling that, at least as it pertains to the Ukupacha, that what we're looking at in the symbolism is a designation not just of some spiritual concept, like the underworld. Rather, we are, we're actually looking at, at a landmark, a marker that designates the entry into a system of tunnels under the Andes. You see what I mean? So rather than it just being a spiritual concept, it's actually marking a physical location that gives entry, a gateway, a doorway into the literal underworld be- beneath the Andes. And I'm not talking about Hades or hell. I'm actually describing, as I said before, a system of natural tunnels and caverns and, and, and much of it artificial as well. Uh, in the Andes, there's a, there is a, a legend called the legend of the Shinkana. And the Shinkana gets complicated because they use that term for different things. There's the particular Shinkana, what they call the Shinkana Grande in Cusco, which just references a, a particular tunnel that runs from the Coricancha, which was the supreme temple of the Inca, up to the 
up to Saksai Waman, rather beneath Saksai Waman, into the galleries beneath Saksai Waman, the underground galleries beneath that megalithic complex. And so that's called the Shinkana Grande in Peru. But, but then there's this other legend of the Shinkana, let's call it the, the general Shinkana. And what the Shinkana means to the Andean people is the Ucupacha, the underworld beneath the Andes. And they believe, and their legends tell, that there are these massive tunnels that are running beneath the Andes for thousands of miles, that one, for example, could enter the tunnel, this tunnel system, the Shinkana, in Tiwanaku in Bolivia, and pop out in Cusco, and stay underground through the whole route. Or even start from Tiwanaku or Cusco and end up in the Amazon in the north. So we're talking about extensive system of tunnels, again, incorporating both naturally occurring caverns, tunnels, galleries, but also artificially devised. So tunnels that were, were somehow drilled into the earth, bored into the earth to create this network, this underground network. And so you're always going to find this three-tier cosmology all over the Andes, the Yucupacha, the Kaipacha, and the Hanampacha, the underworld the world that we inhabit on the surface of the earth and what might be described as the heavens. Okay, returning to Nyaupi Glacier. In Nyaupi Glacier, we saw the Andean cross, which again represents these three levels, especially when it's cut in half and you only see half of it, right? And, and you probably noticed that in front of the gate, not really in front of the, the gate at Nyaupi Glacier, the alleged portal, to the front and to the left, there's this this what what's described as an altar right and they would say that the priests would kneel down at this altar and press their head up against the indentation or whatever but it appears to me that the altar was purposely destroyed probably by the spaniards in an effort to extirpate idolatry in the region in other words whatever objects that were being used ceremonially especially if they were um idols um or altars, the, the Spaniards would intentionally destroy them. They would deface the gods that were carved in stone. And so on this little altar at Nyampi Glacia, you can see that there was once a face. There was something there that, that was, intentionally, it was intentionally broken up with a hammer, it appears, some, or, or with a large stone or something. It has been defaced. I think that the icon that was once carved into the stone there was Viracocha. It was the god Viracocha, just like on the Gate of the Sun in Tiwanaku. Oh, that same face. That same that iconographic portrait of Viracocha. And I believe that what Nyaupa Iglesia represents is not a spiritual portal or even a literal portal. Like, in other words, you walk through it and, you, and, you, and you're in some other dimension or some other part of the earth or the universe. Rather, I think what it represents is the practical, let's call it, entrance into the Ucupacha, into, the, into the, that tunnel system, the Shinkana, beneath the Andes. So I think it's literally a gateway into the literal underworld beneath the Andes. And it was guarded by a priest class. There was priests there who guarded the gateway, and there's probably a, a mummy placed inside of that, uh, what's considered a, what's considered to be a, you know, the doorway, the gateway. Right. I believe there's probably a mummy there, marking this as a sacred area that, that required special access, and so the, that area was guarded, and that's why you see a little, basically what amounts to a guardhouse up there, a living quarters, let's say, for somebody. Certainly the Certainly the Andean priests would be there, but also probably some warriors might be posted there as well. What are they guarding? They're guarding entry into this literal realm beneath the Andes. That's what I walked away with. And I, I apologize for being long-winded, but that's, that, was a, that was my conclusion. Um, having studied Nyampa Iglesia on site, looking at the the motifs that are present, comparing them with those of 
Tiwanaku and understanding the language of that three-tiered cosmology of the Andes, I drew the conclusion that this is literally an access point into that Shinkana underworld beneath the Andes. And again, I apologize for being long-winded, but that this is the first time I've actually tried to explain that to anybody since I've thought about it uh, up there. No, I'm glad you shared that. Th Timothy, thanks so much for your time. Is there uh, anything you want people to know? How can they follow you, connect with you, keep up to date with everything you're doing? Uh, people can follow me on YouTube, my YouTube channel, Timothy Albrino, my uh, Twitter account and Instagram account. Same thing. Handles always the same. Timothy Albrino, no spaces or dots, just Timothy Albarino. My YouTube, my webpage, which I'll be updating shortly, but you can subscribe to my mailing list on my webpage. That's probably the best way to track with me. Um, and I would say that's that's pretty much it. Timothy, thanks again, and we'll do this again in the future. Well, thank you so much, Derek. It's always a pleasure.